Hi everybody, this is Mr. Gray and today's uh, tutorial is uh, how to do physics with Microsoft Office and I'm going to show you a couple of tips and techniques uh, to hopefully make your life a little easier. These are not things that you are required to do in uh, my classes. Uh, there are other alternatives for doing everything that you're going to see here. Um, drawing it out by hand and scanning it into the computer would be the most obvious, but there's many different ways to do things. This is just one. So if you are interested in learning how to do a couple things with Word, I'm going to show you Equation Editor and also some drawing tips and tricks there. Uh, Excel is also handy for things like doing calculations and graphing, and I'm going to show you Line of Best Fit because that's something that a lot of students uh, haven't seen before. Okay, so we're already in Word here, and um, we'll start by showing you Equation Editor. So I'll just grab a new document here. Equation Editor you're going to find uh, under the Insert menu if you look for an object. And that should give you a list of objects, basically every program on your computer there. What you want is Microsoft Equation 3.0. And I should point out I'm working in Microsoft Office XP, so if you have 2007 or 2008, that might be a little bit different for you. Okay, so I'll just zoom in here a little bit so you guys can see what's going on. Here we have Equation Editor. It's a little tricky to use, but it does a really nice job of things once you get the hang of it. And I'm going to type in uh, an equation that uh, hopefully most people should be familiar with. Uh, in the 4U class, in the 4C class, you probably won't see this equation, but um, we're going to use this for a, our graphing uh, exercise. So I'm just going to type in my equation for displacement. Okay, this is displacement with uniform velocity. Okay, so I just type in D and equals on my keyboard. Uh, it is, or sorry, displacement with the uniform acceleration is what we're doing here. Uh, that is going to be equal to my initial velocity, so I want V and then I want a subscript I. So I've got all kinds of options for sub and superscripts down here. And I just click on the one that I want and I put in an I. And now the trick is that I anything else I type here is also going to be subscript. So I want to, instead of typing right away, press my right arrow key. And that gets me back to regular typing up here. Okay, And I'm going to type in... Uh, it's going to be uh, initial velocity times our change. We've got a bunch of Greek symbols over here. Change in time. And I'm going to add to that. I can do some fractions right over here. And I just press a 1 up top and a down arrow and 2 and a right arrow to get back to my regular typing mode. And I'm over here. And then I need to uh, multiply that by 1 half acceleration uh, times the change in time squared, and now I need a superscript, so I'll come right over here, and there we are. There's one equation. If I want another one, I just hit enter, just like in the word processor. We'll also be worried about our equations for average velocity today. That's going to be equal to change in displacement, or change in position, sorry, over uh, change in time like so, and we're also going to be looking at average acceleration. Now the old course actually had a lab that followed this example almost exactly. Average acceleration is going to be my change in velocity over my change in time. So those three equations we're going to work with today, um, and that is all there is to Equation Editor. It works pretty well. As you can see, I've got some nice equations. They look pretty nice, and that'll show up just as a box. It's kind of like a big letter in your document. So that's Equation Editor. Next trick I'm going to show you is uh, drawing, and you guys probably would be able to draw in here pretty easily. I'm going to show you a couple of advanced tricks. First thing you need is your drawing toolbar. So let me get that thing out here. And then I would recommend normally inserting an object again for this. And the reason is then it's easy to move around in your document. So if I insert an object, and this time I'm going to do a Microsoft Word picture. Here we go. Have a look at the bottom, uh, actually the bottom of my screen. My windows are grouped, but I have a couple of windows open. I've got my physics tutorial, which was just the uh, list of stuff we're going to do today. We've got document one, which is where we had our equation editor and started our, our drawing, and then we've got picture in document three. So it's kind of like a document within a document. 
Um, I can do all sorts of things here. Uh, some people have been concerned about how do I draw things to scale. The best option for you to draw things to scale is going to be to use this grid feature. Grid has lots of options. I can snap objects to it, which means they're going to line up on those grid uh, spaces. I can adjust my grid spacing. And I can also display my grid lines on screen if I want to. And I can even skip if I have a, if I want to snap to a tenth of an inch in this case. If I wanted to have grid lines every half inch, that should do the trick for me. Okay, so now anything that I draw, I've got snap to grid on. I'm going to draw just outside of that box because if you do that, then that box will disappear and you'll just be able to work without all that stuff on your screen. I can draw an arrow, and I know that arrow is exactly five because I can count one, two, three, four, five squares across. That's five grid steps. And remember I said my to draw the grid on the screen every five. I could go back and change that if I wanted to. Go back to one here. And then I could actually count my grid squares if I wanted to. Okay. Um, I should be able to grab that thing there and also rotate or flip. And I should be able to free rotate this thing. So now I should be able to change. Let's try that again here. Change the direction of my arrow without changing the length. So I can draw an arrow which might be, let's say, five grid squares wide, just like so. And then I could rotate it to whichever angle that I wanted to. And now I've got an arrow that's five squares long, and it's up at an angle. This is almost a three, four, five triangle we've got there. So I could put these arrows together, these vectors together. And actually, you'll notice what's happening is that I can't quite line them up tip to tail because I've got my snap to grid feature on. So if I go back into my grid and I don't snap my objects to grid, now I can line this guy up a whole lot better here tip to tail. And there's a graphical method for adding uh, vectors. Okay, so that's uh, the drawing uh, tricks that I wanted to cover with you guys today. If I close my window, we'll see some weird stuff happening back here in Word. Um, you'll see that I've got my what was my document on the other in the other uh, drawing in Microsoft Word. There, you can see I've got a window or a box here about that size, so it's very similar to Equation Editor. I can move those around pretty easily. But the weird thing is I've got this grid, and of course, I think that's a bug with Microsoft Word. If you turn the grid on in one spot, then it shows up everywhere. So I'm just going to do that, and we'll be back to normal for our document. Okay, so that's a very nice way to, to uh, put some items into a problem solution or a lab report. Uh, next, we're going to move on to Excel, and we're going to